A few years ago, I heard about an, an interesting endeavor where people were trying to make an artificial retina. And that seemed like an intriguing device to me because if you can make an artificial retina, you think about what it has to do. It has to take a light signal, convert it into electricity, and then direct that electricity into cells that are connected directly to your brain. Now, that is an interesting technology. And I never tried to make an artificial retina. But the whole idea of communicating with cells electrically intrigued me a lot. But this is an area which is filled with a lot of people who have been trying to do this for, for 60 years. As a matter of fact, um, two Nobel Prizes have already been awarded for technology for communicating with cells electrically. But I thought that I may be able to offer something using nanotechnology. And so I started to work on this problem. The first thing that I want to do, though, is give you a sense for the scale of the technology that we're talking about. The circle there, which looks like the rising sun, is about the size of an average, the diameter of an average human hair. And the cells are inside of it. The red circles are, are blood cells. The kind of gangly looking thing which has arms coming out of it, that's a neuron. That's a brain cell. If you look right around the central blood cell, there's some smaller features. And those are bacteria. You can see they're a lot smaller uh, than the blood cell. Um, and if we go zoom in even more, we, can get, we see some smaller cells. And we can identify what we've been looking at. Those are E. coli and Staphylococcus. Now, we can also see that there's some interesting things going on around one of the bacteria. It has some little nodules sticking off of it. And let's zoom in a little bit more. First, I'll identify the, the actual uh, viruses that I used. Uh, the red one is an HIV virus. And the, the, the other funny looking one is called a bacteriophage. And it has a very interesting property. It can actually attach to that bacteria and bore itself inside. Now that inspires a particular type of device. And in a sense, the bacteriophage is actually communicating with the, with the, with the bacteria. And so what I'd like to do is make something which does something very similar to that, but we need, we need some wires. And the wires that I'm going to try to use here are carbon nanotubes. And I'll explain what carbon nanotubes are in a second, but for the purposes of now, this, they're just tiny wires. They're actually so small that the diameter of a carbon nanotube is 100 times smaller than the HIV virus. So they're very small. Now, what, what the bacteriophage does to get inside the, the uh, E. coli cell here is to attach this little bit of small protein. And it actually opens up what looks like a fairly thick wall, although it's still very thin in reality, but thick enough. And if we could do that, attach something to the end of the carbon nanotube, you know, something like that same protein, then hopefully we might be able to actually have that carbon nanotube go right inside that cell. And then we'd have an electrical connection. But we're missing something here. We have a carbon nanotube inside a, inside a cell, but we need to somehow get the signal out to the world so we can hear what the cell is trying to say to us. And that's where we employ nanotechnology. So I'm going to drop something behind this. This is an integrated circuit. And it's actually a state-of-the-art integrated circuit. Uh, it's up so you can see all the way down to just above where the things that I'm interested in are. Because one of the things we need in order to be able to communicate with our carbon nanotube, which is inside the cell, is we need some switches. Because we'd like to have a lot of these nanotubes communicating. And we'd like to talk to a lot of cells at the same time. And so we need some switches so that we can move these signals around, just like the switches that you turn the lights on and off with. If you look at the little white box there, 
That's about the size of one of these switches on this, in this integrated circuit. It's about the same size as that virus, as a matter of fact. I mean, you could put a gazillion of these on the head of a pen. These are tiny switches. So, but then the question that you have after you've actually done this, you've placed your nanotubes on those switches, is how would you actually make something like that? How do you get those nanotubes to go to the contacts on those switches? What type of technology would you use? Well, we came up with a very innovative way to do that. Let's go back to our carbon nanotube. A carbon nanotube is a form of carbon, obviously, and if the uh, form you're probably most enamored with is, is diamond. Uh, I believe that actually the carbon nanotube may become just as valuable as diamond for some of its uses. It's, it forms, the carbon atoms form in kind of a honeycomb structure around the tube, and it has some real interesting properties. It's very strong. It has some very good electrical properties. It's an ideal wire. So to get that to the contacts on those switches, we actually put the carbon nanotube in a suspension of water, and we open up little windows to those switches, put an electric field, and they get drawn in almost like a magnet. And if you look at the figure, that's the first time we did this, and those are an array of deposited uh, nanotubes in, a, uh, in windows that are arranged at about the same spacing that we needed to, for them to be to fit inside that, that little circuit. So we've got basically the technology to get the signals out to the outside. So how do we talk to cells? Well, we can, even with just this, without attaching anything to the nanotubes, we can do something to talk to cells just by getting the carbon nanotubes to talk to each other a little bit. So if you take two nanotubes and you just let them communicate with each other and you put cells in the vicinity of them, then an interesting thing happens. When the cells get very close to these little tiny nanoprobes, they contribute to the conversation and the amplitude goes up. So they're actually communicating. We don't know what they're saying. Um, but we do know one thing. Different cells say different things. And so this is a potentially very valuable tool for detecting different types of cells. So let me switch for a second, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. If you look at the little red box in this figure, that's a little bit smaller than one of those blood cells. If you could make a circuit that size, it would probably float in the bloodstream just as easy as a blood cell could. The size is kind of interesting because you could fit hundreds of those little switches, those transistors, inside that, inside that one little box. Enough of those that you could actually make something intelligent, something that can not only talk to the cells, but it might be able to make some decisions depending on what it hears. And decisions like, uh, if I see something, give out a little bit of a drug to maybe give a treatment. Or you could have it, when it sees a particular type of cell, you could have it send an electric signal to that cell and tell it to die. But we're missing one important thing in this whole scenario. You need to power this some sort of way. And it's not likely that you're going to connect a battery to this and then drop it into the bloodstream. So remember a few minutes ago, I said, or a few seconds ago, seems like, I said that um, you should be able to attach something to these that's functional, that makes it do interesting things. Well, what we were able to do is attach some enzymes, nanotubes, that actually have it convert sugar into electricity. And as it turns out, you have a lot of sugar in your body. That's what you use to keep your energy going. Well, why can't we use the same energy? So we chose a couple of enzymes 
that could actually do that, that could actually take the sugar that might be in your bloodstream and convert it into electricity. We did that with a couple of nanotubes that were only spaced two microns apart. And there's nothing in the technology at this point that keeps us from getting them a lot closer than that. As a matter of fact, close enough to power most of those little transistors in that circuit that I showed you. It's a pretty interesting technology. There's actually one final point that I want to make. I'm not a biologist. Okay? And in the, uh, in the title of my talk, it says learning, part of it says learning to talk to bacteria. Well, for me, that learning process was assembling a group of people, some of which were biologists, and a lot of other people who knew things that I didn't know at the time. And in that process, we were able to create a communication device that, it, that can actually talk to living cells. And I think that's pretty much the way it works, though. We learn what we need to invent what we want. And anybody can do that. Thank you. <laughs>